Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sixth hour with the movie void. You, I am joined here with the wonderful Gory B movie and Hi. Queenie, who isn't who is coming back right now. Queenie, we just started. Oh, How yay! Hi, guys. <laughs> Queenie oh. looks gorgeous. Oh, thank you. She looks yes. gorgeous. I love the new look you got, Queenie. I thank love you. it. She's so pretty. <laughs> yeah, she totally is. Uh, you know, it's a special day. My dogs are evil. I know. Like the I mean, devil. It is the day of the crawl. It is the day of the crawl. This is like like YouTuber, like, I don't know. It's a big event for us. Like how athletic people have marathons they train for. Like I train for the crawl. Yeah. 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 And like the thing is, like for me, the crawl is like incredibly important because I didn't even know that horror tube really existed until the first creepy crawl happened. Like I didn't know like that we were such a huge and giant and wonderful, beautiful community that helps each other out and always like chills together and has such a fun time. And I am so grateful to be part of this again. And I am so happy that we have such a beautiful horror audience and that despite YouTube giving us all this shit throughout the years, we're still fighting strong and doing this. Yeah, the, the community yeah. snuck up on me too because I remember when we started our channel, I had wasn't familiar, aside from Cinemassacre, which is also other things, wasn't really familiar with any horror channels. And then we started making videos and so we started looking to see what else was out there and we found Bloodbath and Beyond and then we started finding like spooky astronauts and drum dumps and I'm like, whoa, there's actually quite a few of us and we all kind of became friends and like as new people come in they are invited into the fold yes no we promise and i was like always like always a bit like you know a bit unsure of of if i really truly belong because despite because i don't only do horror i also do a lot of nine schlock and also a lot of so bad good kind of movies so I am glad that I was accepted by the horror community so nicely. I put on these beautiful so, press-on nails, but now I can't type. And I'm trying to type to them in the chat. And I'm just like, two letters. And it's very it's much like beautiful. teenagers trying to text. Yeah, it's hard being beautiful. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. I was but it's it's lit. I learned lots of cool slang today when I talked to teenagers <laughs> on my stream. <laughs> I was actually planning today to have like a bunch of little guests and stuff like we could like interview together and so on but things <gasps> went a little awry because the problem is that I have to go to Germ fly to over to Germany tomorrow for six to eight weeks to take care of some loose ends people who have been watching my vlog I hate Sundays will know what is going on I know what's going on <laughs> and just and we are, you are German, right, Ivan? No, no, I'm can Canadian Croatian. I just lived in Germany. I so am so time. sorry for the mix up. Um, <laughs> no, all right. you, do you all speak right. Croatian? Yes, I do. Can you say you're watching the creepy channel crawl with the movie void in Croatian? Oh, God, I don't even know how to say void in Croatian. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> or, or, or can or you say like or something? <laughs> something cool? Just okay. make something out. I'll we try to say it. <laughs> Vi gledate creepy channel crawl some movie void on e gory B movie e kvini tod. <laughs> I love it. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Everything sounds cooler in Croatian. I didn't yeah. even really know Croatian. Like, I'd never heard the language before, but I like it. It's very guttural language. I, I like, like it. Yeah. It it's has like a, a little more, it has a little more attitude than like German, but kind of similar. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's more like melodic. It's kind of more into the Italian direction, but a little bit more. I like it. I, I, it's like the Italian horror version of it. Yeah. Hey, oh my God. There's so many people in the chat. Hey, everybody. Freaky Girls Live is also on there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you just made a movie, movie, right? I mean, you yes. invited me to the premiere and Remember, I couldn't yeah. go because it's far away. I just wanted to like talk, talk to you guys. About Tell us that. about it. Wednesday was absolute insanity. We like premiered our movie Blind. It is a movie about an actress who um, used to be very popular and famous and had a lot of love. And then one day she got eye surgery to fix her vision because she was tired Rose of wearing glasses in contact. <laughs> no, it was our, our lead. She had to have French. eye surgery after Planet Terror because she got into a car accident and her sunglasses went under her eyes. And that's why her eyes are kind of derp now, but I still love her. Oh, I love her too. Oh. But the thing is, <laughs> she got blinded after this eye surgery. And now she's still living in her house in the hills, <gasps> trying to live a normal life. 
But then one day, some dude who is a big fan of her wearing a mask. Is it you? No, it's not me. <laughs> I'm just the producer. Okay. <sighs> I don't even have a cat cameo. I, I'm just teasing. And, uh, I just dude, figured this is based on a true story. No, no. The dude sneaks into her house, and she has no idea about it. And so there's this ex-actress who's blind, and there's a guy living in her house, watching her every single move, and she doesn't even know about it. And that's what the movie is about. So I haven't seen the movie yet, but the bloke on the poster, he looks almost like a mannequin. Is he a mannequin, or is that a costume? What's going on there? That that is kind of like um, his mask is pretty much was inspired by a bit inspired by the Barbie Ken doll because um, he is somebody who is disfigured and wants to look like as beautiful as he can. And he didn't, since he is in love with such a beautiful actress who he is stalking all the time, he ends up uh, wearing this psychotic Ken doll mask. I like and, it. And it, it it's kind really of. Crazy. It does. I've seen I, the poster it, and I saw the yeah. trailer. It looks awesome. I can show you um, the the poster shortly, so you guys get an idea of what it is. Wait one second. Zachary Hayden has a good point. So why does he wear a mask if the girl is blind? Maybe it's for him. Like, it's for him. He wants to feel beautiful. Uh, yeah. You know, that makes sense because Lols just likes to wear masks. That's, just He just that's likes the security of the mask. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah, Lols, get it. yeah, yeah. Lols always wears a mask. He's, he's very protective of his mask. And um, the thing is, like, we had our premiere yesterday. And, uh, no, not yesterday, two days ago on, on Wednesday. And we had such insane guests. We really had such insane guests. Um, it, oh, how do I turn screen share off? I forgot all about that. <laughs> oh my. Um, yeah, okay, I think it's back to normal, yeah. And, um, we had Wishmaster, the guy who played Wishmaster was at our premiere. It was oh, crazy. wow. Yeah, and then he was really happy about, about our movie, and he wants to work with me one day. That happened. <laughs> so, That's exciting. I'll, I'll probably, yeah. Having the dude who played who played Wishmaster in one of my movies soon. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Uh, thank you. Michael St. Michael, who plays the Greasy Strangler, he also has a cameo in our film. I love that. The Greasy Strangler. How did you get involved in this project? We're just gonna kind of interview you because your stories are more exciting than ours right yeah. now. <laughs> And it's actually a funny story. My, yeah, Andrew Devolf. Yeah, that's his name. That's the Wishmaster. He's going to be in one of my movies. He's oh, really incredible. cool. Incredible. I love Wishmaster. I, everyone so said that uh, uh, Death uh, God, um, House was the Expendables of Horror. I disagree. Most things in the movie sucked. Wishmaster is the Expendables of Horror. There are so many big icons in that movie. Tony Todd's also in there. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And Andrew Duboff, he now has a brewery. He also invited me to come to that brewery. So I'm probably going to be doing uh, a vlog for The gal who plays Alice in Friday the 13th Part 1, she has a winery. And yeah. at uh, Crypticon, she's like, anyone can just come over and just have wine with her. I was like, I'm taking you up on that. And, and we also had Michael St. Michael's. Oh, uh, yeah. You asked me how the movie happened. It's funny. My good friend, Marcel. <laughs> He's a director. He's made a couple of movies earlier. Um, and I was like talking about getting into producing. Like it was the first two months I was living in LA. And all of a sudden, um, Marcel one day wakes up and tells me, I just had a dream. I was shooting a movie in my house with a blind girl. And Joe, like my good friend Joe, who's a writer, Joe Netter, he's also good friends with Adam Green, who made the Hatchet movies. Um, he was like, Oh, I actually have a script lying around about a blind girl that I was writing for my girlfriend, Sarah French. One week later, he had the script finished. I like had my eye over everything. And we pitched the idea to, the, to all of our friends who we wanted to be in the movie. Like, this is a, a project of love. Like, the people we cast, we didn't have a casting project. We processed, we knew exactly who was going to be part of that movie right when we, um, pitched the project to them so that was like actually pretty crazy and uh, they all loved the idea one month later we started shooting and uh two weeks later we had a finished movie that just needed to be edited and now here where we are we just had our premiere two days ago and festival season starting and it's quite crazy 
I met That's Mike. incredible. Ivan, I'm yeah. going to give you the proud daddy nod. Good job. <laughs> I'm going to give you the proud mommy thumbs up. Yep. Oh, thank you. But I'm going to make it awkward like, like in Twin Peaks. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Heard about no. you. No, and I'm I thank you. And I, I met <laughs> I met Michael St. Michael, like the Rishi Strangler, at uh, two events. I was at the Clown Motel premiere and at uh, Art of the Dead, and he was there and we asked him, Hey, we loved the Greasy Strangler. Would you like to have a cameo in our film? I all love the Greasy Strangler. That is so cool. All you'd have to say is bullshit twice. And that's exactly what he did. That is so cool. I have my bullshit artist. Yeah, he did. <laughs> But in our movie, he says it very Cat sad. shit, dog shit, lion shit, There's bullshit. Shit. Beetle dog shit. <laughs> the world is full of shit. And, like I, I asked, I asked Michael St. Michael at one point, I have an interview with him on this channel. Uh, it's called The Intervoid. If you just look at the section, The Intervoid later, you can like check out that interview. And, um, and Mike, I mean Michael, and asked Michael St. Michael's what his favorite form of shit is. Like he's he's counted so many forms of shit up, snake shit, shit, penguin shit. That's the coolest one I heard. Cheetah shit. Zebra shit. According like, to did cheetahs even stop to shit? They're always on the go. Right? They must yeah. be really fast. They must be really fast shitters. <laughs> Maybe they projectile shit. Yeah, but the thing is, Michael St. Michael's favorite form of shit, the greasy strangler's favorite form of shit, is beetle. Dung shit. Nice. Officially. And Maria Olsen, she was also there. Whoever knows, if, if anybody knows her. For me, she's kind of like the female yes, Tony Todd. She's been uh, also kind of like Doug Jones. That she does a lot of like character work, a lot of stuff with like makeup and prosthetics. She's very good in the movie Vile, but she's also done like the Percy Jackson movies and stuff. Yeah, she was also great in I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu. And mm -hmm. I don't care how many people hated that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> and, um, and um, I'm, I keep making all the things. People, uh, have you YouTube slept? Is... Like you've just been going, going, going. Ah, last yeah. When days. do you sleep? <laughs> no, the last You'll couple sleep of days. More. <laughs> so <laughs> something I want to know is there's a lot of different kinds of producers. I know there are producers that fund things. There are producers that are involved in like the idea process. Um, what was your experience as a producer like? And can you kind of give us some insight into what kind of goes into that job? Um, well, as a producer, you're generally like- We're just taking over his hosting, Quinny. <laughs> I know. Have the overview of the entire project. That's generally your job. You can like, if you, if you are like, I think a shitty producer is the kind of producer just, um, lays back and lets everybody just do their thing, hires the people and doesn't like control the project at all anymore. And I think like that's the most lazy way of producing something. But generally as a producer, I think the, your most important job is to keep everybody happy, to see that the writer and the director have the same vision and that like you are also staying behind the project because it's actually like when it comes down to it you are the one who's responsible for that this thing even happened yeah. in the first place like that, <laughs> that's the person they're going to go to like when when um back in the day when silent Night, night deadly night came out and uh, they got all these criticisms the ones who were named first were always the director and the producers and that movie rocked, but it got so much shit back then. But anyway, what I was like, it's if you want to be a good producer, you have to bring the set food every day. You have to watch out that everybody's happy. You have to watch out that all the actors are satisfied, that they have everything that they need. You have to look that the project is coming along in a proper way so and just like, like have an overview. Task. You're pretty much doing everything a little bit. You're, you're helping the director out a little bit. You're helping the writer out a little bit. You're even checking if the sound guy's got all his stuff. So that's generally what you got to do. You're kind of everybody's bitch. <laughs> and then when everything's over, you got to organize the premiere. You're the one who's, who's got to wow. send the movies to the festivals. You're, you're the one who takes care of all that shit. So exciting. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It's been a ride. It has really been a crazy little ride, like making that movie. And I can't wait for you guys to see it. We already have like a couple of trailer reactions from Dicey, for example, and uh, Monty made a trailer reaction. <laughs> Queenie also made a trailer reaction. And the thing is, um, we were yeah. planning to release the trailer last week, but the thing is, our premiere sold out. 
And when our premiere sold out, like there was no point to release the trailer anymore. And uh, now that uh, the premiere is out and we're looking for distributors and the festivals are starting to come in. Do you still need trailer um, reactions? Because well, we were going to do one, but we yes, couldn't get we it do. done before July 1st. So that's why we were like, so no, we, we can't. Still, we still do. So there's, there's still a week left to do trailer reactions because we're going to have to release this trailer because of film festivals in one to two weeks. So that's when that's happening. So everybody who made trailer reactions for the movie, they're still come, we're still releasing that trailer. Don't worry, you didn't do oh, it for cool. nothing. Well, it's just after this weekend, I actually will have time. So cool. It was just a little postponed. So that's the thing. But like making your own horror movie, if, after you've reviewed so much, it honestly gets you thinking like, not to be as judgmental to people because it really, takes a lot like a lot of of that's what um because my cousin's a screenwriter you know which I, i've mentioned before i know but um you know he tells me that a lot because he's been involved in some movies that he personally as a viewer doesn't like he's had his name removed from movies um you know like he was uh the original screenwriter of the day of the dead remake bloodline and then he, they went in a different direction with it and he's like yeah i don't really want my name on it but he still won't talk badly about a movie because he's like there is so much work that goes into any kind of movie so much money so much time so much energy you know so he has a lot of respect for the process and i think like you know like you're saying like when you've been involved in it, it it's it makes you see movies in a different way yeah definitely like when i started my channel um i did not know like two years ago when i started my channel first of all i did not know that um how you've come so far look at you <laughs> i know he's like a shining star i, I know, know. <laughs> oh no i'm not are you so still our friend? You, <laughs> you're gonna be like too famous for us soon can we get yeah, out we can stop talking to us all together eventually oh, come on okay. i know it's all right i'll be making you guys i'll be making movies with you guys one day i promise you but the thing is like i did yeah, not I know and this is for every <laughs> every like uh movie uh, review channel watching like you do not know that pretty much everybody who you're talking about is going to watch your review except that like if it's like for example something like Guillermo del toro who has like five thousand reviews on youtube like about his movie he probably won't watch everything but every little indie feature people are going to care and look at what you are saying about the movie so you're not like doing this and the people involved in the project you're talking about are not going to know about it everybody's going to check they people actually care what you um made how what, what you're talk what you're saying about their movie on the internet people really do give a shit oh i know some people care a little too much and it's just like <clears throat> hey it's just one person's opinion it doesn't yeah. mean that you didn't work hard it doesn't mean that there are people you know like i remember especially with indie ones you know being somebody you know like you guys who reviews movies sometimes I, i've had a lot of really cool people where you know because i like i would say i like most things i watch i mean that's why we did horror addicts because yeah. we are horror addicts we love horror you know, even shitty horror. But occasionally we can't recommend something and we try to be fair, but like I remember we did Good Tidings and that guy was so upset. And it's just like, I'm sorry. You know, we also have a responsibility to like, you know, not just put out reviews that you think are, you know, favorable just because you asked us to, so. Yeah, so what I'm saying is like, be nice. You can be funny, you can make fun of something, but don't do it in like this bitchy, insulting yeah. way. Yeah, you can be honest without completely tearing somebody apart, but exactly. there are also filmmakers out there who cannot take any kind of criticism. Like oh, that yeah. guy who did a, a House of the Dead, like he wanted to like fight people who gave him bad reviews. Ooh, the ball, yeah. Yes, yeah. that guy's hilarious. Yeah. They kicked him yeah, off, of, off of Letterboxd. He was like the funniest thing on Letterboxd. I Which know, is funny because he hates bad reviews of his films, but he gives bad reviews to like every movie. I had the pleasure <laughs> of meeting him one, in one day. He's hilarious, that guy. Um, he was a uh, man, Marcel. Uh, he directed the sequel of his movie Seed, Seed 2. And um, that's where I met him. And he's very funny. He's, he's actually like doesn't take anything that seriously. Like when he wants to box somebody, he does it for fun and just like to to get attention. He's not really that of a of a 
freaky little bitch as people point him out to be, but he wants to pull out, put out that image so people talk about him. So what about the cool cat guy. saves the world guy? That guy's oh. intense. Okay. That guy's really oh my god! I saw the other day. Uh, what was I watching? Your movie sucks. Yeah, yeah. He was 420 doing, awards. 420 awards. Oh my god! <laughs> Guys, if you know D D cool. Derek Savage, that's his name. Yeah. The of Cool Cat loves you, or, or soon coming out, Cool Cat stops a school shooting. Oh boy! <laughs> that guy, he threw a 420, uh, like a marijuana themed when awards he said party. When he says that, it's like the fourth biggest award show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, like, you I couldn't stop laughing the whole, I watched the whole thing. I watched oh, the wow. whole thing too. It was oh, so wow. funny. It was so good. It was what I needed. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it lightens up your day. And like, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling so shitty. You know, I'm just watching this going, okay, I'm all right now. <laughs> it's all good. Thanks for 20 awards. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> you need to. It's funny. Oh, you don't have to watch the whole one. There's like a smaller clip you can watch. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah so the whole one is a little exhausting to get through. Like only if you're like. Yeah. There's like an eight minute clip that he did as well. So yeah, that yeah. can be all the good stuff. <laughs> so so is what is it like for you watching reviews now? Like, do you take it personally? What's it like on your end? I, we haven't uh, gotten, uh, we have got, I haven't gotten like any reviews on YouTube yet because people haven't, we've just had one screening of our movie so far, but that's going to change pretty soon. And we have gotten a couple of online reviews like from Horror Society and, um, and so far they've been incredibly positive. The only ones who didn't like it, but they didn't publish anything so far was Bloodbath and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think one thing that is important when, like, you know, just reviewing movies and something I think all three of us can, you know, probably agree with is you kind of got to, you can't compare, like, a little, you know, indie straight to VOD movie to, like, something that has a huge budget and has exactly. a lot more people involved in it. Like, you know, something that's like, like, get out, you know? Yeah. Oh, movies like okay midsummer you can compare to get out you know they're yeah. on the same level they're both artsy they're both theatrically released but you know that doesn't mean you have to like everything either you know you compare straight to vod movies and stuff to other ones you compare indie movies to other ones you compare full moon movies to like trauma and other full moon yeah. and i think when you do that you find that you're able to enjoy a lot more and appreciate a lot more I know, I know that that is absolutely true. You 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 appreciate these movies a lot more than like it, it's it's funny. I counted up how much how many people we were involved all together, like all of cast and crew, like producers, actors, directors, everybody. It's twenty six people. Wow, That's we awesome. have more people involved in that in the crawl. There are fifty three <laughs> people involved in the creepy channel crawl. Yeah, twenty six. <laughs> That's people. not counting me. Twenty six people who worked for. Um, 12 to 14 days every day for 18 hours. That's, wow, that's how it was you know? done. Yeah. Uh, it was exhausting. Like, oh my God, my mm -hmm. sister, after she was like an executive producer on this, also taking care of everybody, she was sick for two weeks after we wrapped. It was pretty crazy. And, and what about your review of Bloodbath and Beyond? They may not want to do it just because they know you. Like, we have a few friends who are filmmakers who have sent yeah. us movies and stuff and we just have a general policy where if we know you we, we are not going to do your movie and even like i mean you know like i have a situation yep. where my cousin does review theatrically released movies that we've seen but even then i don't really comment on the writing because i'm biased right you well, know, no, they were really know, nice you know what about like trailer really, reactions they were truly trailer nice about reactions. It. Like, absolutely nice they were like trailer reactions um, are fine yeah like especially if you haven't they, seen the they, trailer yet right yeah just we do like yeah. first Show looks right a away. lot where we watch the trailer and we kind of talk about the movie because you know we have inside information, so that tends yeah. to work better. Yeah, I think so that's like, better because then you can still be biased. Bloodbath, Bloodbath and Beyond was like, bro, I thought it was a little bit of a slow burn, and I thought one of your characters was a little bit of a wasted character, and I just really would have wanted to know more about the killer and and stuff like that. And it like it made sense. It made exactly sense why why they didn't like. I think it. honesty I is really good. Not everybody's cup of tea, but like yeah. we're also going for something else. We were trying to make this very tasteful, classy little horror film uh, in a little bit of like 
a Lynchian, Hitchcockian yeah. influence in it. Like it's it's not too gory, but where it's where the gore kicks in, it's very effective. So, I'm gory. Tell yeah, you. you're gory. So, but it's it's like we were going for something different. And I think like that works out. And um, it's so crazy. Horror Society gave it a 10 out of 10. Wow, really? They gave our movie a 10 out of 10, like straightforward. That's forward. intense. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and um, like, do you have anything to show? I mean, can you show a trailer here for the people watching? I can't, I'm not allowed to do it yet. It's like mm. we're waiting one to two weeks and then we can show the trailer. But, I stopped up for the creepy channel crawl for the dogs. There's water in here and snacks. I forgot right. to get anything for myself. Lol's got me a cup of coffee. It's going to be a long night. We're hunkering down. Yeah, we're hunkering down. I'm still. I'm I, still I going told to be Dan, Dan's like the cavalry. I was like, please, we need sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband's out right now. So, is he out? He'll be sleeping he in the background. <laughs> Oh, guys, are you aware that guy who did the, um, I hear a little secret from, from. Oh, tell Little Beardy the name of your movie. It's called Blind. My movie is called Blind. You can't type, stupid. You don't even know English. Stop. And it's directed <laughs> by, Mar it's directed by Marcel Waltz. Stop it. You're and it stars me. Sarah French and Ooh. Jed Rowan. You should yeah, see this dog with his cinema. hands up on the keyboard. His little paws. Who, me? What? My <laughs> dog. He's sitting here with his hands on the keyboard. His paws. He looks like he's going to start typing. If he Look does, like I swear to God, <laughs> I will just, like, poop an egg right now. <laughs> oh, Sean. I am the a son of a... You don't even know. <laughs> the Green Strangler made a song, guys. Do you know that? What? Did you really... The Greasy Strangler made a rap song and he sent it to me today and I haven't no heard way. it yet. I, can we watch it? Yeah, we can. I love him oh, so yeah. much. If, when you see him again, if you see him again, will you just tell him that there's a girl in Washington who thinks he's kind of the most amazing thing ever? I I, I can tell him that right away. <laughs> like yeah, if you want, tell him that. If you want, I love him. If you want to get him to like, get an interview with him for, for the horror, I would go just right sit ahead. there with my, my jaw dropped and be like, yeah. Okay, guys, <laughs> I'm gonna screen share and show you guys the the greasy strangler. <gasps> this song. is exciting. Okay, here it is. You're so much more than a hot box. You're gonna be going forever. He he rhymes. He raps now. You could be my forever love, Queenie. Aww. <laughs> you don't know how long I've waited to hear that. Hooty tooty, just go cutie. Hooty tooty. <laughs> Me and Gory running through fields covered in blood. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, we'd come home from that midsummer festival and be like, well, you know, the punch was a little tart, but we had a good time. It was a little bright for my eyes. I'm yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. I, I couldn't use more so nighttime hours, but overall, good time. People had a party. There's two tracks. One's Hootie Tootie Disco Cutie. That's that's what we're listening to now. And the other's called Bullshit Artist. I can't hear it very well. Yeah, turn okay. it off. Let's check out Bullshit Artist. This is like the best thing that's ever happened to us. <laughs> I don't know what the stream is, but it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> I'm just going with it. <laughs> I'm just... I'm just this go way. going <laughs> right. on with whatever's happening. Movie boy time. <laughs> I just roll with it, you know. That's what you gotta do sometimes. Just gotta roll. It's with weird. It. I don't really hear him rap, but but I still think it is a good idea to make this thing a little fun for everybody. Well, I like know that it's out there. Is it sort of like one of those things where they take something someone says in a movie and make it into a song, like that song yeah, yeah. in the Bride of Chucky? Yeah, he actually did rap a bit on on these songs he says himself, and he's well, also it in makes a new sense show. because in that movie he has a giant prosthetic dong, and the size of your dong directly relates to the size of your talent. Therefore, even though it's a prosthetic dong, somebody had to go into the effort of making that dong. Therefore, he's probably very talented. Um, his Science. dong is by by the way at his house, and he is. Oh, that's my sister in the background. Um, uh, he is offering money to anyone who wants to buy that dog. I want it. No, no fucking <laughs> way. No joke. 
You're not even, I'm not even kidding. I oh, actually fuck. want to start something because there isn't one yet. And I find it incredibly ridiculous. I want to start a museum of horror movie dongs. I want to get the walrus dong from Tusk. Oh, I yes. The dong that becomes reanimated and fights the rat and beyond reanimator. I want to get the prosthetic dongs from Greasy Strangler. And I just want to like have them all for display so everyone can enjoy them because those dogs should be in a museum. There like are, the Nazis only, can't get their hands on them, like in Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, those belong in a museum. There are only two My dongs museum. from the Greasy Strangler that exists. There are there were only two dongs. It's just one's two. a tiny one and one's a big one, but I don't judge. <laughs> it's the same size of a dong. They're both huge. Corey and the Dong Museum. Hey, can I say something really quick? Uh, I did a stream with children for the first hour, and I didn't swear or say dong once i know well, it's on my best behavior but i do look like somebody who's just been pulled over and knows that they have coke in the glove compartment like the whole <laughs> screen i could tell i was like okay behave. i understand now you get to be an adult <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's after 10 p.m even in la kids shouldn't be watching anymore so we're oh allowed God. to say all the all the dongs and fucks and shits and bullshits artists you want to. it's oh. like it's 10 o'clock do you know where your dongs are Remember Do when they know where your dongs TV? are? I think it went like that. Something like that. How did you guys like Midsommar? I liked it a lot. A lot, a lot. I was like, uh, I'm torn with it. Part of me like totally loves it. and part Like of me, Natalie like, and Brulia torn? Because it's kind of, uh, it was a little too long, I have to say. I don't that's, think so. I was, I was invested. That's the only thing that like bothered me. But I like, and it is a bit predictable because you know how these cult stories. The only thing out. is, I mean, I know you weren't, you couldn't see some stuff because it's mo to be kind of a mystery. But I would have liked to see. Uh, obviously, you guys know it's a horror movie. There are kills. I would have liked to see the kills actually happen. Yes, definitely that. Uh, but they, but they had a cut Bravo that was for equal opportunity nudity. You got flopping dongs. You got flopping moves. You got butts waving in the wind. All the nudity, all the sizes, all the genders, all over the place. It was gorgeous. Here's my one complaint about the movie. I said I had one complaint earlier. No, I have two complaints. Two complaints. So they stay in this like kind of cute like Hansel and Gretel hostel, and there's like dongs and boobs and stuff all over the walls. I am so upset. That me, famous Instagram dong drawer, Gory, who's made at least 12 dongs, was not invited. That would have been my Sistine Chapel. Okay? I could... Oh, definitely. That would have been the pinnacle of my life. That sounds like it. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, that, that was such a, such a dong fest. <laughs> Sorry but, um, but it also had boobs and bajingos, too. So... And there's an NC-17 cut of, of... And it had a great there. character arc. I, I think it's really cool that the character is in a completely different place at the end of the film than the beginning. It had some parts that were really shocking. Um, that, that's sexy. Yeah, it's great. That, that, that's Everybody sexy is like, that's sexy. Yeah, that's got to be the most awkward sex scene ever. <laughs> So it's funny because I read an interview with the actor who's in that sex scene and he actually upped the ante of the awkwardness because he felt that afterwards he should be naked and originally he wasn't. And I think that's really good too because if, as I see it, he was drugged to where he wasn't really in his right mind and he's drugged to give himself an erection. You know, they did that to him. So as far as I'm concerned, he was raped. And so he should have that moment of like vulnerability and like confusion and stuff after doors. I think that was a brilliant decision on his part. Great movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, uh, well, yeah, well that, that's wait. Exactly Nightmare Maven thing. just made a video about dongs and horror movies. You know what I'm doing next? Nightmare Maven. Whoa. Right. I am rubbing off on her so much, guys. You don't even know. All the time she's calling me up, gory dongs this, dongs this. I'm like, dude, chill it with the dongs already. Like, I've got <laughs> other things I'm interested in. Look at her. She's Damn, like, Damn, Nightmare Maven. I did not know. <laughs> I did not know. Oh my god! You always keep nice. things so professional. I actually admire yeah. your professionalism on your reviews, uh, Nightmare Maven. And hearing you that you love dongs so like much, dongs, okay? puts a grin on my face. You're a cool kid. She is cool. <laughs> all of my friends are cool kids. And then there's yeah, me. all of you guys are badass. <laughs> and then there's me. <laughs> I never made a dong yeah. video. Damn it. I made a I'm video, though, to... where I talked about a lot of panectomies. My, uh, 
all through the house review. That was pretty much Don't all make dongs. A dong video. That was basically a dong video. I want to do a list of top 10 panectomies though, but I want someone to collab with me. Oh, what I wanted to collab with you, Gregory, for a long time, I still haven't asked you that. I wanted to make a top 10 penis mutilations video. I just freaking said that. Listen to yeah. the words that are coming out of my mouth. I know, I know you did. I know you did. And you just like, said it. We need to do top 10 panectomies, you and yeah. me, all the panectomies, counting them down, yeah. Corey and Ivan. <laughs> like, I'm telling you. And already, also Queenie. Like, because I have my, all my work go through her. We have Cannibal Holocaust. I have to double check it. There, there's Make a bunch sure of dogs. There's and my very, lawyer needs to look it over. Yeah, there's there, a very classic panectomy in in the in um, Cannibal Holocaust and uh, and definitely Hostile too. And one of my personal my favorite though, is Beyond Reanimator because not only is it a panectomy, but then it becomes reanimated and it fights a rat. I oh yeah of course but I challenge you with this because this is really the sickest one have you seen that little I think movie I'm upsetting over? your chat though with all the we can talk no, about it they can handle it <laughs> they can they're vo uh, vo people they're voiders who, yeah they're voiders voiders <laughs> we've seen some shit, shit as world. voiders okay <laughs> just so anybody knows though when I'm like oh I'll have my people you know look it over I, I'm talking about Queenie and Laura oh Those darling darkness people. doesn't love doesn't no no okay. it's not darling darkness M Sanders Whiteley doesn't like Cannibal Holocaust. That was the second review I did, actually. I'm, I like that. Movie, I like that you say I, review. Not a lot of people say review, but um, Cinema Massacre does, and I like it. I um, do, uh, like, I mean, I, yeah, teeth, definitely teeth. That has a teeth is so good. Oh, like, I love the panectomy in Scott's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse where he's holding onto the dong, and it's yeah. like metaphorically, like, that is his like lifeline. Then, <laughs> the hell yeah, that dog then it rips is, off, is and it's legend. like, who hasn't been there where they're clinging onto a lifeline and it rips off in their hand, right? Like, I related to that. That took me to some deep places. Childhood stuff came up. It was very dark. Yeah. What people don't really remember is this movie called The Neighbor about this little this neighbor woman who kills people. And in one of the first scenes, I've like, she aims this needle into the tip of the dude's dong. And it is so oh graphic. And blah, uh, every time I see that, my dong. <laughs> no, mommy, no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Not today, Satan. Yeah. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, let's, let's, let's drop the dong talk. We have to make that call, call out. Drop that dong talk. Oh, we're going to talk about balls dropping now. Where's These balls? nails feel so good. I might never <laughs> take them off. It's nice. They are scratching. They are. Yeah. They are. And now I can be like, when I scratch it back. Like, like the claws, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to get your kids and make them eat gingerbread. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The Death Witch. Lol. These are the kind yeah. of movies I avoid. Which is better yeah, anyway. yeah. As a guy watching dongs get mutilated in horror movies is a painful process you have to like psychologically prepare prepare yourself for it. Uh, I get but that. When they were going to um, circumcise the girl in Green Inferno, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> the girl did get circumcised in Girl Next Door. I was just like, yeah, no. Yeah. No. How no. does, how does, um, no Danny, horror how does Danny Nightmare <laughs> deal with all this, all, with your dong session? Dude, story? just like water off a duck's back. Like Danny just likes to roll with the dongs. Like they don't <laughs> And bother him. Is he a dong enthusiast like me? No. But he is comfortable but in his dong sexuality. Yeah, like he was comfortable. You know, like he appreciates that I'm a dong enthusiast. That doesn't mean that he has to be a dong enthusiast. Right. And I love it my hobby the term dong enthusiast. Because it's when I'm having a bad day or I do well, like if I finish the sleep creepy channel crawl without sleeping, you know what I'm gonna get? I'm probably gonna get some helicopter dicks. And there ain't no better way to impress a lady than with a helicopter dick. That's that's true. It's a good move. It's true. Shouldn't come in too strong with it, though. Don't come There's in too an strong. art to it. There's there definitely is. an it's art to it. I mean, like, if you were doing a titty tassel dance, you wouldn't just hit somebody in the face with your tits, you know? Yeah, it's it an art form. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Read the crowd. Yeah. Read the room. Absolutely. Yeah. Read the room. Yeah. I feel like Queenie Todd says things that are really wise that should be in books. <laughs> She's like one of my best friends. Of course she does. Yes. She called. <laughs> Oh, another thing I wanted to discuss. We'll get me figured out. Huh? <laughs> another, 
Another thing I want to discuss with all of you guys, and we should, I think, decide this on the Creepy Channel Crawl. We still have 20 <laughs> minutes, and we have to decide this. Me and Queenie have been doing the what? <laughs> <laughs> I love Laura's comment. People who hate dongs are dongamies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, can anyone hit me with their tits? It was funny too. <laughs> Speaking of weird tits, there's a bloke I heard about on the internet who was insecure that he had like tiny, angry raisin nipples, which I get that because those are my least favorite kind of nipples too. So he had nipples tattooed on and they look like little tattoo pepperonis. Ooh. So there's that. Oh, oh, Queenie and me have been doing like the Hellraiser streams for over a year. Oh now. yeah, well, guess yeah. what? Move on over because Queenie's coming onto my channel next month, and we're going to talk about Hellraiser. Oh yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But we still got Hellraiser everywhere. I will be all over. Yes, Queen. <laughs> Anyone's like Queenie and want to talk about Hellraiser? will be like, all right, bring snacks. And over. Emily's Adventures in Horrorland is going to be with us. Yeah. We're going to talk about all the babes in Hellraiser. Mm -hmm. That's a good topic. I'm looking forward to that. But the thing is, um, me and Queenie are still have judgment ahead of us, and then yes. there's not going to be a lot of Hellraiser coming until the TV series comes and the remake comes. We'll be doing everything as it comes along, of course. But the thing is, we are wondering, what are me and Queenie going to be movies streaming next? What yes. franchise should we do? Oh, can I pick? Well, Hellraiser we have is Puppet great. Master Hellraiser. as an option. Hellraiser is really like when you get towards the end there, you just feel kind of like dead inside. You're like, well, the problem yeah. is because they were all spec scripts, and then they start making actual Hellraiser movies, and you're like, oh god, why? Why has this happened? How does the mighty <laughs> fall so hard? I know. Okay, you I feel like after that, because that is that hurts your soul. It hurts your soul to have an all the way through Hellraiser marathon. You yeah, need something <laughs> that is going to build the well, soul up. When it's they over, said, I'll be like, they said going to tear our souls apart. So that's exactly what they yeah. did in the end. Right. Yeah. But yeah. not in the way we wanted it to happen. But uh, I'm just, okay. I'm there's just a couple. Wondering. I'm going to. Did you. Uh, Evil Dead franchise? How, I was also how, thinking Texas Chainsaw. How long of a be. marathon? I, I would say a solid marathon is Scream. Even the worst of that series is still entirely watchable. Absolutely. And good. Which True. is Scream. Scream is a solid. Also, you are living in California now, so you can, you know, do some, like, field trips. Yes, definitely. Uh, though you can actually rent the Scream house here, but it's it's a bit pricey. You can, like, uh, rent the and Ben for, just went and visited the, the school for a it. thousand bucks a, uh, For a thousand bucks a month. Yeah, I think uh, the Evil Dead franchise is another solid one. Ooh, yeah. That would be fun. Um, one I just finished that's kind of a whirlwind is uh, the Prom Night franchise. It's four movies, and it's weird. <laughs> yeah, Sean Paleo, you just say it like Scream Three. That's just exactly the problem. It's a bit too bland, to but not ones, yeah. terrible. Like not, a lot of franchises, terrible. you get to a movie that's just fucking bad. Like I watched Prime Night, and uh, the remakes here, Bill and Part Four, is terrible. The rest of them are, are good enough. But most franchises, like you know, even Hell or not Hell or Halloween. Like then there's Resurrection, and you're like, oh fuck, yeah. we're at that part of the fucking movie. H twenty. I like that one, but yeah, I mean, yeah. most franchises have a movie where it's just god freaking awful. <laughs> you know what's one oh that would god, end you my... on a high note? You watch the Leprechaun movies, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll hurl, and then the remake ain't bad, the new one, which is kind of a sequel. Yeah, I know. We dropped Leprechaun in space. Oh god, oh I, my... I marathoned the Children of the Corn franchise recently. <laughs> that is a true oh, test yeah. of endurance. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> so part three that's got to be one of my favorite fucking movies that movie i laughed so hard i'm gonna make a cornfield in the oh. city in my apartment building oh dude and then there's a giant worm and then there's charlie's theron and nicholas brendan and that kid's got so much fucking attitude he's like damien if he grew up a few more years but not from part two like in between it's like it's the omen the lost years but with corn mm hmm, mm -hmm. I lost everybody. Just ignore me. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're enjoying your rant. Yeah, they're enjoying your rant. Of course they are. Everybody loves you, Gory. Right? That is not a show. It would be more like the Everybody Hates Chris show. <laughs> everybody oh, wants. yeah. Everybody the how to hate you. So you feel better? Like, huh? What? <laughs> you want me to pretend to hate you? Is that what you want? I don't know, dude. I think I'm oh, an acquired taste, though. I'm like... <laughs> 
I'm like so pomegranate. You. Like some people are like, oh, I'm really into pomegranate. And some people are like, I've never had a pomegranate. But, you know, there are like, some people who just don't like them. Yeah. I like pomegranate. That's well, me. yeah. <laughs> I no, I po- love leprechaun returns. It was good. Fuck yeah, Persephone. <laughs> yeah, Ben Grimm, we could actually really do the Wish Masters. I think whatever you pick, it's going to be a fun ride. I actually uh, want to give a little shout out since you're talking about this stuff. Uh, I have a friend, uh, Bob, who has a a channel called City of Geek here on YouTube. And what I love is he does this series where he's, it's called Watch Everyone. And he will give you a, he's watched every one of that franchise and he'll give you a full review of the entire series, kind of touching on each movie. And it's really good because he picks some really, really painful franchises. That's he just awesome. did the pup- pumpkin head ones and I'm just like, oh, honey. Oh, but they're really oh good God, reviews. Oh. So that's a City of Geek. Tremors. City of Geek. Hey, Tremors is Tremors, good. yes. Uh, Puppet Master. Didn't yes, we already Tremors. About? Yeah, Damn. Queenie. I think we're going to have to make a vote, like on Twitter or something, for people to yeah. vote which which yeah. franchise we're doing next. Because there is, we should do it on, in your group in the in the Wolf Den on Facebook. Yeah, so that sure. There we should like vote. You can do what, it yourself. You're she does like it. werewolf movies, so maybe you should endure the torture that is the Howling franchise. Oh, that's oh. <laughs> that's or so make crushing. it angrier on yourself and do the ginger snap. Do I ever do anything easy? I'm the overachiever, remember? <laughs> okay, I dare you. Me. Okay, you dare I me? dare you to do the Howling franchise. I double do it, dog is, dare I'm you. I'm up for it. Is isn't it just three or four parts? Oh, fuck. <laughs> there's, like, no, there's, there's like six or something like that. There's at least seven. There's a lot there's of them. At least there's, seven. Eight. there's New Rising. You there's eight. The chat, if you know there are eight. Because then there's a Reborn. Yeah. Wait. So it should be eight. Uh, chat, how many Howling movies are there? How many Howling there are eight. movies are there? Eight? Because there's seven wow. New Moon Rising, and then eight is Reborn, which is the newest okay. kind of tweeny mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. That one. <laughs> oh. It's like the Twilight kind of one. CGI. Nightmare. So yeah, I believe Reborn's the last one we had, right? So there should be eight. Um, no, correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Right. You're right, Corey. It is eight. It is exactly eight. It's the Howling. Howling two. Your sister is a werewolf. Howling three. The marsupials. Howling I love four, that one. The original nightmare. Howling five. The rebirth. Howling six. The freaks. The Howling one. new moon rising and Howling reborn. Because you know I watch them all, even when they're bad. <laughs> Not can those are the canon ones. I'm not like, counting like fans. Movies, stuff. I don't care how good they are. I will love them anyway. I'll find something to love about I, them. Oh, you know what? You know what we should thing. review. <laughs> you know what we should review, like kind of a dare. Uh so I I I got it just because I, I can't not watch a werewolf movie and it sounds so fucking bad. And the actress in this isn't my favorite, like so bad one of my favorite so bad it's good movies. There's a werewolf movie. I can't remember the name of it, but it came out this year with Lindsay Lohan. And I've heard it's god awful, but I kind of have to see it. And I did get it. Oh my God, with Lindsay oh, Lohan. What's it called? Yeah. What's but it called? she's in. I know who killed me. And I don't care what you guys say. That movie is so entertaining. You can love it. I'm not. <laughs> so, I'm not I saying I even love it. it. It's just entertaining. I love it. Okay, I do love it. I just said I loved it. I, I'm a liar. <laughs> I'm a liar. Oh, I need to see Bone Hill Road. Yeah, I need that to one see. had. Oh, I, I got a like on that. They spent all of their money on their costumes. The script, it kind of, it's almost like, it's almost like two different movies with a different movie put in the middle. It's a little inconsistent, but it is good for what the, it is. The um, the Lindsay Lohan werewolf I'll movie is called called Among the Shadows. <laughs> That's it, Among the Shadows. Have you seen? Has anyone seen Among the Shadows? And how bad was it? Mm. Has anyone seen it? I'm I'm curious. Let's look at the trailer together. Really? Okay, let's do that. We got like five <laughs> like minutes. Fall down like the furry hole of werewolf movies. The furry it's, hole. Yeah, it just keeps going down, <laughs> and it gets worse and worse. I'm just gonna leave that there for the chat to play with because it's just um, right easy, and I don't pick the low hanging fruit. Among right. the shadows, I think so that just like that. Free, <laughs> so bad it's good review from me. Oh my god! Like oh, like Rohan and 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 uh, fucking werewolves. That's just that's just. Let's priceless. watch it. We got like five minutes. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. It's waiting right here. Okay, start screen share, and here we go. Okay. 
Oh God, this you want? We should we should watch this. It's gonna be good. Okay. It's gonna be so go. gooder. <laughs> oh wait, I didn't put the sound on. Let me fix that. Okay, starting from the oh, beginning. Oh, look how cute she is. I think there's a lot of CGI in this movie. I'm yeah. immensely proud of our European Federation. <laughs> you want it <laughs> now? Oh my God! What? That was what? Oh God, no! That was just so wonderfully unconvincing. I loved it. Look at her. They made Lindsay Lohan look kind of human again. Why don't you go to the European place? Because I think it's one of you. I can't see the movie. All right, I gotta click on him without muting him. Oh my God. Is it a game? You think this is a game? It's like the government and werewolves and Lindsay Lohan, and she's got her hair up and like mom here. Yeah, we have to watch this. <laughs> I want to see it, but I want awful. her to be a werewolf. It's, right. it's the government, Lindsay Lohan, and the conspiracy. And, and then some... they have eyes like in demons. Hell yeah! I feel and like there was some kind of chemistry Ow. between those gals there. I think it's going to be worse than the cult of Chucky, mind you, the death twitch. <laughs> I feel like we're seeing like four of the same scenes over and over again yes, of Lindsay do. Lohan. Like, I don't, I wonder if she's yeah. in the movie that much because it's like the same four scenes over and over. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, probably marketing it as if there is a, if there's more Lindsay Lohan in this than there actually is. I wonder. Is. Just Among more. the shadows. They probably just brought her in for shooting, like for two days. It's gonna be the best like, movie we've ever seen. And then just they were all like, skinny. <laughs> "It's gonna be so I'm good." Excited and horrified. Uh, Cult of Chucky wasn't the worst. I would say even it's not even the worst Chucky movie. Seed of Chucky is the worst Chucky. Yeah, movie. Seed of Chucky. At least Cult of Chucky tried to do something different. Yeah, it, it is it my favorite? Hit, no. Do I really <laughs> like it? Not so much. But Seed of Chucky like is still scene. worse. The glass scene where her head gets like that's that was cool. Yeah, it had yeah, its moments. Cool moment. Yeah. How's the <laughs> remake? Because I'm hearing so many mixed things. People are either hating it or loving it. I haven't I've checked it out yet. Mostly good things. I, so I don't know. I, I've heard most yeah, of our friends in the community that it. I've chatted with lately seem to enjoy it. And surprisingly, a lot of people who usually hate on a lot of stuff seem to like it. So that's good. Right on. Yeah, totally. Right. I want to see Crawl though, so me too. Yeah, that's what I'm really good. excited about. Yeah, I've heard I'm gonna so go much see Crawl after the Crawl. That's like my I, reward. That's fun. And like a helicopter yeah. dick. So. Isn't that just weird? How that planning <laughs> gonna be a banner? I, yeah, I I planned it this way, guys. I knew totally, about this movie. Totally yeah. planned it. Yeah. To, yeah. And Gory, I promise you, it's like this year, I just had a lot of stress during the time the crawl was going on. But I promise you, next year, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to so be on the, the creepy crawl committee and like watch out that this all runs down. As oh, as possible. yeah. Next year, we'll have like a committee or something. Because, like, I truly. Uh, it, it's fun. But it is a lot right? of work. See, that was a good idea, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Got your back. Are you eating your hair, sweetie? I like your hair, though. You got kind of like a Kurt Cobain -y thing going on. Yeah, oh, like I got a bob now. Oh, cute! I've never heard a guy refer to his hair as being in a bob style, but I, yeah. it is accurate. I I wanted it that way. That's <laughs> her for wusses, Zachary Hayth. Yeah, keep I'm on crawling. Nice oh yeah, I got my own little hashtag. Hashtag keep on crawling. What? No, I just heard oh, I, I like that hashtag. Crawling. Keep on crawling. I've heard crawl like. Monty G, who is a tough critic, he said it's great. So for everyone I know who's seen Crawl is super impressed. So hands yeah. up. Oh, I think he means everybody. am I gonna take a nap before I see Crawl? Probably, probably, but probably not, because honestly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, we gotta go really quick. Going. But uh, uh my son had bed bugs, and then right before the crawl happened, I found a couple in my room. So my bed is completely dismantled. So I oh, I had no. to do this like a simple. So I don't even have a bed right now, which oh, makes no. it staying up easier because where am i gonna go yeah it's okay. oh man my sister got bit by a bed bug 
Okay, what is next up in the crawl? Next up in the crawl is uh, the one and only Emily's Adventures in Horrorland. That Emily's so hot right now. Yeah. She's the and so guys, um, I, I'm like, we had a fun little chat. I wanted to do more this year, but I promise I'll do more next year. Things were a little stressy, but I hope you enjoyed our little hangout and our little chill session here with Queenie and Gory. And I'm glad you guys joined my par part of the crawl. And um, I'll be also be back for Queenie's um, yep. hour, which is hour eight. And we will be discussing. Fun. We will be discussing. I won't. Oh, right. Disability and horror. Disability, disability, and horror. <laughs> disability and horror. Yes. That sounds fantastic. I um, I'm done on the crawl until tomorrow. I will be on Dr. Wolfie Love's hour, which I'm so excited about because he's like my favorite. And we're gonna talk about Scooby Doo and then the after party, guys. So if you guys make it through the crawl, I'm gonna have like challenge questions to see who like stayed up for a lot of the crawl, and there will be prizes. I think yeah, I let's the, let the question be, what trailer it. did we watch? It's a, that is a brilliant was... question. That will be one of the questions. So show, join me for the after party, guys. It's going to be sleep to pride fun. Thank you so much for having me, Ivan. It was really nice getting of to course. catch up with you. And of course, I always love talking to Queenie. And um, it was not, I love talking so to proud you of you. you. So incredibly queen. proud of you. Like, I love you guys so much. Like, you've helped me grow as a channel and you've helped me grow as a person so badly. Like, throughout the two years I've been doing this and if it wasn't for you guys like I don't think this channel would still exist so I love Honestly, you if it wasn't heart. for you because last year on the crawl you emailed me I didn't know you and you wanted to be on the crawl and I'm like this guy sounds cool and we did it but yeah you were the one who reached out to me so I'm really grateful for that and just incredible being friends with you thank Seeing you your journey Maybe cuties out there oh, please good, subscribe good. Everybody Please subscribe to this little everybody. channel because I do vlogs every Sunday and um, I haven't been doing that many reviews recently, but they are coming and the uh, Midsommar review is coming out tomorrow. It's already in the Sundays if you want to see it, but I'll be doing a lot more reviews in the next couple of months. So it's going to be fun. We make a lot of funny reviews, kind of like confused reviews, but just without a drawing, just like with me. <laughs> and, you guys um, will have fun with it. So please subscribe and join our little community of voiders. We're fun. We're very disturbed, fucked up people. Join the fun. We you see Queenie often on the channel. You also see Gory often on the channel. So I I live here. <laughs> join the fun. Okay, so thanks guys for letting me be part of the crawl again. And I will see you guys again in hour eight when Queenie's doing her hour. All yeah. right, I will be rolling. At the end of the video. See you guys Thanks. over um, on Emily's Adventures in Horrorland. Yes, over at Emily's Adventures in Horrorland, everybody. Say goodbye. I'm letting the thing run. Here's a link for you guys, and there should be one in the description, too. And yes, wait, let me just uh, make this. Oh, fuck. Why isn't this? Oh, yeah, it's here. You're doing great. You're doing great. Here we you go. Got it. Oh. You're watching the Creepy Channel Crawl, 28 hours of horror live streams featuring some of the creepiest channels on YouTube. Up next is Emily's Adventures in Horrorland. Click on the link in the description and continue the crawl. And for the full schedule, check out the Creepy Channel Crawl page on horroraddictstv.com. All right, guys, see you over at Emily's.